I'd like to say a little bit about where I draw and, and, and why. What I try and do is capture something about the movement. And they had a nice dog, and his name was Leo. And this was called Leo's, the story was called Leo's Run. It's Leo feeling kind of sad because he's locked out of the room that he lived in. And he's sort of sniffing and wondering what's happening. And looking sad because can't go in. This is when he finally meets the other dogs. Because we had two dogs with us, two cats, and two pet rats. Gertrude, and this is Maggie, the deer hound. And they all they all got along very well. And you and you you like to draw, and your drawings are exquisite. And how did the drawing start? I I know your parents were both artists. Did you just do it because they did it, or did they encourage you? How did that whole thing? Okay. My mother always encouraged me to draw and paint. And I remember the first drawing that I remember that I made was um was a it was a scribble, and it had it was a I told my mother. This is a cat with kittens in it. Hi, Goofy Goofy. How's that funny? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we always had animals, so they were sort of the family animals. And certainly I have favorites. My, the one I thought of as mine first was probably Molly the goat. She, we, you know, we knew her mother Maggie and Molly was <laughs> born when I was, you know, right, right around near. So I saw Molly as a baby and then we saw her growing up and I used to pet her a lot because she was a nice French alpine, brown and white. Um, and then when she finally got to milking, she would let me drink straight from her, you know, milk into my mouth without food or anything. And my mother said, when I called out at night and I called Mommy, Molly would answer me because she thought I was saying Molly. So we had oh a very God. close bond. Oh my God. But, you know, <laughs> goats don't live forever, but she was such a sweetie. Donkeys, they're sweet, but they're not much to ride because they're, they're, they're small and they're not very interested in the whole thing. But uh, finally I did get a horse. I was 12 and we bought a horse out of a field in uh, Goleta for $25 and he had been a plow horse, I think. But we reached an agreement, I had him, He's, I had him for quite a while. His name was Red. He had a huge Roman nose. He was the first um, hooked nose. Mm -hmm. 
actually, I rode him in the Fiesta Parade once, and I didn't think he was ugly, but <laughs> I'm sure people were kind of surprised to see him in the Fiesta Parade. But you get a, you know, you get a feeling for a particular kind of animal, even if you're not drawing it, if you're with it and brushing it and taking care of it. And so I think <clears throat> I have more of a feeling for hoofed animals because when, you know, when we were small, we we did quite a bit of milking, cleaning stalls, you know, and uh, feeding. I did these in Cedar Falls, but they're from zoo drawings of a female kudu who had a baby in, right in front of me. And, and then finally it got up and began to nurse, so that's the nursing picture. And I, I did it, it looks a little bit like a, um, a different kind of thing. It's a soft ground etching, and I had a piece of silk that I laid over and then drew on top of, so it's a much softer feeling. And all the ladies of the bunch, there's a whole bunch of females, wanted to meet it, and they all came up and looked at it. The mother wouldn't let them near it at first, and then she let them look. And then it went and lay down by the father. So that, I have, an, I have a brown one of it too, but it's very faint. So here he is, lying by his father. This is the, for, the first one here is, well, is the oldest woodcut that I have, and I did it in 1960. So I did it in graduate school. This was my dad's cat, Tidy, and it's 71. Oh, it was a big fat cat, a very nice cat, and he did curl up his paws like this when he was relaxing and purring. He was a nice cat. He was just a very sweet cat. My dad loved cats. And he spent a lot of time on my dad's lap. I think there's one, I think there's a gray and a black and a gold as the, the plates, so there must have been four different plates. I've always liked India print, and that's where we get a lot of these backgrounds. It, a cat always looks good on a print, print surface. You know, drawing gives you an image that you can call up. You can look at the drawing and you can see the animal that you were drawing or the person, whatever you were drawing. And even a bad drawing will show you that. So I think what you're doing is processing the material in a different way and stimulating your memory. And so that it all becomes much more inside of you. Can I say it's moldy? But sure. This is a blue mold that develops on the rags that I soaked this clay in. And I don't know what mold it is, but it doesn't smell bad or anything. It makes the clay good, I'm sure. I'm sort of making a rocky
gives you a res responsive medium that you have to take care of. It's almost like an animal itself. You have to keep it wet down or it gets too dry. I mean, you, if it's too wet, you have to dry it out. And then if I'm gonna do that, I better make more texture up here. Will be a lion, I think. Yeah, I thought nice it'd be nice paw. if he'd hang his paw. Something that sticks out, like the face, will get too dark and there's nothing you can do. But I think it will look all right, <laughs> whatever color. If I wanted to urge anybody to participate in a particular way, I would say to study animals, to look at them, and uh, it's a, it's a beginning of respect, certainly. I did a whole show on the Blaubuck and the rhino. This is an extinct blue animal that was somewhat related to the sable animal, and I've, I've drawn sable antelopes at zoos. But this, uh, this guy was extinct in 1800. He was in South Africa, it was a small population. And there was an interesting article about him. And let's see, the Smithsonian Magazine by Jay Gould, um, who wrote for them every month for quite a long time. Because it was a small population, it was very vulnerable. And so when the when the Dutch came in, it it had a very appealing color. It was. Uh, Himmelblau, 
uh, heaven blue and I, I mean I think it had some touches of tan on it the males were the ones that were blue but if you shoot all the males that's the end of the species and they managed to do it When I was even making them in several pieces, the pieces, uh, I'd pick it up and turn it over and I'd have two pieces where I'd had one. So that in some sense, when the clay is fragile, it tends to fragment. And I think because I'm talking about fragility, the fragility of life and animal life on, on the planet, I think it's compatible. And we're going away from environmental concerns even though often we say we're not. And I think if you see something dead it makes you think about it. I guess I was thinking of them as reconstruction elements or uh, ways to put the animals back together because I think that our, our need is to reconstruct the habitat for these animals. In a sense, to recreate their lives. <laughs> I, yeah. I love I love the drawings. They just I, drawings are just so fresh and they they're so um, personal. And well, yeah. I think it's the beginning of all the other stuff. You know, it's the beginning of sculpture. It's the beginning of printmaking. And uh, I don't draw much right now, but I sort of feel it's all in my head. Or in my sketchbooks, one or the other. Yeah, because you've done so many. Yeah, you've done so yeah. many. I have a big shelf in the garage, and um, I have them listed under what animals, and uh, there are some from trips, but it's it's a one, two, about three big shelves, and then there's some other covered. So I have a lot of drawings, and I weave it through some of them. Some of the white things are really bad. But usually the not so good ones kind of lead up and explain the last one, you know, I don't know. This this is a Brian, the guinea pig. But yeah, she had great, big, beautiful feet, and so that was sort of a foot drawing. So I think this is the best one of his personality. She had this, she was female, so she had this thing they called a milk sack, and they pulled the fur out and put it around their baby, you know, before they have the baby. But each animal has a, a personality for me, as well as a, a part in the, the piece and the work. I think this is the dog that killed one hamster and then lay by the door till he got the second one. This is actually a big plastic plate that I drew on with um, 
a Dremel. It says it's a cream bar, young cock. These are these are uh, Pear David's deer, and they were saved by an Englishman who had a collection of them where all the wild ones were gone. The National Zoo, and this one had had his horn removed. It had been infected, they said. That head there. <laughs>